the ages, man has always striven for excellence. And from the beginning of time, he created tangible objects to symbolize and reward outstanding achievements in the pursuit of excellence. Such a symbol is the Heisman Memorial Trophy, presented each year to the outstanding college football player in the United States for his performance on the field in that year. The winner of the Heisman is truly an exceptional athlete, for he has been selected from among nearly 40,000 others as the best player in one of the toughest and most demanding of all sports. Not only is the trophy a very special recognition of achievement, but it also represents an ideal that all young football players can aspire to. The trophy was created by the Downtown Athletic Club of New York City in 1935, and in its first year was known as the DAC Trophy. In the fall of 1936, John W. Heisman, the club's director of athletics, died. And in a fitting tribute to the man who had been a coaching great and innovator in football's formative years, the trophy was renamed the Heisman Memorial Trophy. While the Downtown Athletic Club created the award that was to become the most celebrated and sought after in college football, it has never had any part in the voting procedure except in the ballot tabulation. The electors for the Heisman are the wholly independent members of the media, press, radio, and television, who vote under the jurisdiction of five sectional representatives. Thus, the people who have the greatest opportunity to see and evaluate the players, about 1,200 reporters and broadcasters from all over the country, are responsible for selecting the winners. While many of the Heisman winners have gone on to successful and sometimes outstanding careers in professional football, their selection is not based on any consideration of the potential they might have after college, but solely on their achievements in college competition in the year of their election. At a time when there is a great deal of criticism about the bigness and commercialism of college football, the Heisman Trophy is a heartening reminder of the basic values that exist and will continue to exist in the sport. One of the most successful college coaches around today is Penn State's Joe Paterno, a man who has never lost his perspective about the game and what it means to the student athletes. I think a football player in college gets a great deal of benefit out of football in addition to the fact that he gets his name in the paper and things like that. I think that's just uh, one of the slight things involved in college football. I think that a boy uh, gets a feeling of losing himself in something greater than, than he is. The fact that he's willing to make sacrifices for the good of the group, uh, the fact that he can discipline himself and appreciate the value of hard work, all of these things, uh, I don't see where he gets them anyplace else in his life. Practice cannot be fun. I just don't believe it can be. I hope that we don't drive him beyond the point where it gets to be hard work. I hope there's some enjoyment out of it. I hope there's something that they get out of it in addition to the work, but I don't think it's fun. I think the fun comes in when you suit up on Saturday and your kids know that they're prepared, they know they're in shape, they know they're ready to get the job done, and they get that feeling of confidence that all of us get when we know we're ready to do a job, and I think this is the fun that they get. The trophy itself is a rugged-looking bronze statuette depicting an old-time running back sidestepping and straight-arming a would-be tackler. It was created in 1935 by a well-known New York sculptor, Frank Eliscu. The man whose memory is perpetuated by the trophy is recognized by football historians as one of the giants of the game, an inventive football genius whose impact on football was enormous. The very first winner of the trophy was Jay Burwanger from the University of Chicago in 1935. Two Yale greats, Larry Kelly and Clint Frank, followed. And then in 1938, a quarterback from TCU was honored. Five foot seven inch, 150 pound Davey O'Brien set an all-time college record for most rushing and passing plays in one season, 400. Two years later, the Heisman winner was the spectacular Tom Harmon of Michigan, who gained over 3,400 yards and played almost every minute of his three-year career. A solid 193-pound power rusher, old 98 was noted for his cutback running and for his torn jerseys, pieces of which were all most tacklers would get. The first of six Heisman winners from Notre Dame was Angelo Bertelli, whose ball handling skills from the T formation and ability to come up with a big play helped his team average more than 40 points a game. In the final year 
failure of World War II, the United States Army was victorious on the battlefield and the gridiron. Two young West Point cadets monopolized the sports pages almost as much as their older colleagues did the front page. In 1945, Felix Doc Blanchard and Glenn Davis finished 1-2 in the Heisman balloting. The first and only time two players from the same school were so honored. And the following year, Davis was the deserving recipient of the trophy, with his teammate fourth in the voting. was the mister inside of the dynamic duo, a powerful fullback who is as tough to stop as the unbeatable teams he starred on for three years. Davis, as Mr. Outside, had an even more remarkable record. He set a major college record for most yards gained per play in one season, 11.7 and no major collegian has ever approached his career average of almost one touchdown for every nine plays. He scored a total of 59 touchdowns and gained an amazing 4,129 yards from rushing and passing. Blanchard and Davis, the most celebrated college backfield combination in the history of the game. The greatest player to come out of the Southwest Conference was Doak Walker of SMU. As a junior in 1948, he was honored by the Heisman Trophy voters as the outstanding player of that year. For three years, he was an All-American, scoring 303 points on 40 touchdowns, 60 extra points and a field goal. He gained over 3,500 yards running and passing and set several Southwest Conference records that stand today. An explosive player with his variety of skills, he could make any play go all the way. the award and what a what a great day it was uh, I, I, I was just floating uh, I guess for three or four months after it a handsome and personal young man Walker was lionized by the media and became virtually a national hero it opens a lot of doors after you get into business and I, I'm proud to have been a Heisman winner the second lineman to win the Heisman was Leon Hart, a co-captain of Notre Dame in 1949. At six foot five and 255 pounds, Hart was a savage blocker and tackler, starring on offense on end-around plays and as a receiver. Some experts consider Hart to be an all-time All-America end. State's Vic Janowitz was a standout on offense and defense in 1950 and as a junior was a key factor in the Buckeyes' success that year. He was the second junior to win the Heisman. 1950 was uh, a year when they started the two-platoon football and this is how we started the ball game. I kicked off. When we got the ball, I called the plays. If I didn't run the ball, I kicked it and uh, if they would have intercept one of my passes, I was there to play defense. And I think what struck the eye of the reporters throughout the state or throughout the country was that I did so many things. You know, it's funny, you think of 1950, uh, when I was playing for the Buckeyes here at Ohio State, I never even heard of the Heisman Award. It gives me such satisfaction because uh, the Heisman Award trophy is probably the most beautiful trophy ever seen, and I have one. After two Yale players won the trophy in the 30s, the Ivy League went unrepresented in Heisman honors for 14 years. Then in 1951, Princeton started to make football news with its team and its quarterback, Dick Kazmaier. My sophomore year in the fall of 1949 was really the start of Princeton's successful 22 game winning streak. Charlie Caldwell, our coach, had come back here after the war and had not met with great success prior to that time. 
but we managed to win six of our nine games that year. We ended up the season winning four straight. And from that point on, during my next two years, we didn't lose. Passing and running for over 4,300 yards, Kazmaier accounted for a total of 55 touchdowns in his 27 games for Princeton. And during his career, the Tigers never lost to their major rivals, Yale and Harvard. In his Heisman winning senior year, he was the nation's total offense leader and the most accurate passer in the country. A first-rate ball handler, his opponents never knew whether he would be passing or running from that single wing formation. Wisconsin produced the 1954 winner, Alan Amici. Receiving the Heisman Trophy was probably the greatest thrill that I had experienced uh, in all the time that I'd played ball through high school and college. Amici was signed by the Baltimore Colts after graduating from Wisconsin as its greatest grid star. In his first play as a pro, he ran 79 yards for a touchdown. Ohio State's third Heisman winner was Howard Hopalong Cassidy, one of OSU's best ever. Notre Dame couldn't produce much of a team in 1956, but it did produce its fifth Heisman winner and one of its greatest all-around players, Paul Horning. The blonde 200-pound golden boy was a jack-of-all-trades who could run, pass, block, and tackle, and was to go on to greater glory as a pro at Green Bay. The 1958 Heisman recipient was a young man who learned early in life the lessons of adversity. He was stricken with polio as a seventh grader. Not only did Pete Dawkins conquer the disease, he also went on to become the captain and star of the West Point squad. You know, the darkest moment, I'm sure, in my athletic career occurred uh, the day I was called up to Red Blake's office and told that I was no longer a left-handed quarterback, but had just become a fifth-string right halfback. And I can recall wandering out to practice that afternoon as a, a broken and uh, very disconsolate man. And I found myself mired down somewhere in the fifth string, feeling that there was no future and no hope. And it was a very desperate time. Um, and yet, out of it, one afternoon not too long thereafter, I think I was returning punts as cannon fodder for the varsity. And was able to break away on a couple of them. And uh, from this very meager beginning, uh, was able to work out to a, a modestly successful career as a college halfback. The Naval Academy had its first Heisman winner in Joe Bellino in 1960. That year, the stocky running back accounted for more than half his team's total yardage, quick kick for a 47-yard average, and was Navy's chief scorer with 18 touchdowns. Ernie Davis, a rugged halfback who broke four of Jim Brown's Syracuse records, received the trophy in 1961. The following year, a skinny six foot three inch rollout quarterback from Oregon State was the winner of every major college football award and the first Heisman winner from the West Coast. Terry Baker established an amazing record in total offense, running and passing for almost 5,000 yards. He completed 112 passes for over 1,700 yards and 15 touchdowns and led his team in net yards gained rushing. Hailed by his coach as the greatest quarterback Navy ever had, Roger the Dodgers Starbuck won the nation's top college football award as a junior in 1963. In that year, he completed 115 passes, nine for touchdowns, following a sophomore year in which he was the leading percentage passer in the nation. His incredible ability to elude defenders in running or scrambling made almost every play an adventure. Drafted by the Dallas Cowboys, Roger had to serve four years in the Navy before starting his pro career. You've got to work at it. You've got to discipline yourself. You've got to re repeat constantly. As an athlete, it's repetition. It's, uh, it's study. It's so many ingredients that go into being successful. I know that four key words that uh, I've, I've been associated with, that time, talent, perseverance, and dedication. You've got to take the time. You've got to take the extra time to be successful. You've got to have basic talent. You can develop that talent, of course, with the time and the hard work you put into your, uh, your particular sport. 
In Roger Staubach's professional football career, dedication, determination, and perseverance have certainly paid off. He has led his team in the Super Bowl two times and established himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. Notre Dame's sixth player on the Heisman honor roll was John Hewitt, elected in 1964. Although he played only a total of 50 minutes before his senior year, he set nine Notre Dame records and tied another, while leading his team to a brilliant season of nine wins in ten games. No Californian had won the Heisman before 1965 when Mike Garrett brought the trophy to the Golden State and USC as the nation's leading rusher. The 5-foot, 9-inch, 190-pound halfback had over 4,800 yards in total offense in his three years as a Trojan and holds nearly all of Southern California's offensive records. In 1966, Steve Spurrier of the University of Florida won the Heisman honor. Gary Beban quarterback UCLA to 23 victories against five losses and two ties in his three-year reign with the Bruins. The 67 Heisman winner completed 240 of 484 passes for a total of almost 4,100 yards while rushing the ball for 1,280 yards and 35 touchdowns. The incomparable O.J. Simpson easily captured the trophy in 1968 as USC's second winner. This incredibly gifted athlete piled up a monumental record in two seasons at Southern Cal, gaining over 3,100 yards in 18 games. My wife and I, we spent the evening with, uh, at Mike Garrett's house. He was giving a little party, and uh, I can remember walking in there, and everybody was having a good time, and in his living room there was his trophy. And I remember looking at that time, and I guess that was the first time in my life I really realized how badly I wanted that trophy. I, I, I looked at it, I spent the whole night walking around it. <laughs> The 69 Heisman recipient was a bruising fullback from Oklahoma named Steve Owens. The big Sooner compiled a brilliant three-year record, gaining 100 or more net yards rushing in 17 consecutive games to set a new NCAA record. In 1970, California produced its fourth Heisman winner in six years, Jim Plunkett, a Stanford quarterback whose specialty was breaking records. In his three seasons with the Indians, his total offense record included most pass attempts, 962, most pass completions, 530, most net yards passing, 7,544, most touchdown passes, 52, and most total offensive yards, almost 7,900. His net yards passing and most yards total offense were new NCAA records. Teams coached by John Heisman in the early part of the century was Auburn. But it wasn't until 1971 that a Tiger won the trophy that memorializes their coach of long ago. As a three-season starter at Auburn, Pat Sullivan led his team to 25 victories in 30 games. With Sullivan at the helm, the Tigers averaged over 34 points and 425 yards a game throughout his three-year tenure as a quarterback. Spark plugging the nation's number one team in 1972, Johnny Rogers proved himself one of the most versatile backs in Nebraska history. As a punt returner, pass receiver, blocker, and runner, he broke offensive records by the dozens. In his three-year career, he racked up 5,586 all-purpose yards for an NCAA record. Penn State has produced many great running backs over the years, and one of the greatest was John Capaletti, who was picked for Heisman honors in 1973. 
An all-around athlete, Capiletti was an all-state quarterback in high school and a defensive back as a sophomore at Penn State before he became a slashing, driving running back who averaged 120 yards a game and over five yards a carry. His coach called him the greatest player he ever coached. No small tribute from someone like the legendary Woody Hayes. As a junior, he smashed the all-time record for running backs in the Big Ten and was named to every All-America team. That was in 1974, and the player was Archie Griffin, Ohio State's fourth Heisman winner. But that was just the beginning for the sensational Archie. On December 2nd, 1975, he became the first player in history to win the coveted Heisman Trophy twice. His career running yardage at Ohio State totaled 5,176 yards, the NCAA major college record. He also holds the NCAA major college record for total career yards gained in all classes of running at 6,003. Perhaps his most startling statistic was his 31 consecutive games in which he gained 100 yards or more. It could be said that Archie Griffin is the number one ground gainer in the history of collegiate football. Perfection in any human endeavor is unattainable, but the pursuit of perfection leads to excellence, and the men who have been the honored recipients of the Heisman Memorial Trophy over the last 41 years achieved excellence on the football field. For each one, the awarding of the Heisman Trophy was a symbolic way of saying, this man, in his year, was the very best.